Fred, do you promise not to bark during this video? I don't believe him. Hello, I'm Barbara. Welcome to my channel, Picky Chick. Today I am going to do a mystery jewelry box unboxing. This one is a Goodwill blue box. Listen, there's some loose jewelry in here. I'm a full-time seller on eBay. I'm hoping to find some inventory that I can list in my eBay store or maybe some pieces to keep. Let's go ahead and open up the box and see what we have inside. It has been a while since I opened one of these. And here is a look at what we see when we first open the box. I am going to dump the box over in the corner and pick the jewelry out one at a time, pick out the pieces, and we will take a close look at them. The first item I pulled out is this bracelet. It's an interesting shape. It's sort of an oval and it looks to me, it's not bone or ivory. It may be celluloid. It has a substantial weight to it. It definitely needs to be cleaned up, but it's a pretty cool piece. The next item coming out is this very attractive choker necklace. This necklace is made of graduated sizes of these little rectangular panels. They're hammered. It's gold tone. It's quite a nice gold finish on it. Taking a look here at the end, it has a spring clasp on it and I am not seeing a jewelry mark. This does have a modern flair to it, so I may list it. Oh, and by the way, if you see anything that you might like to purchase in this video, drop me an email at kitsch.barbara at yahoo.com. I'll have my email name on the screen right here. That's kitsch.barbara at yahoo.com and we can work out a price. This may get listed. Coming out next is a very unusual brooch. This reminds me of a 1920s style brooch. Look at the detail on the hat that the lady is wearing. It has uh, rhinestones in black and then some coppery colored beads mixed in there. And of course the other rhinestone details on her neck and her earring. The face looks to be painted, and the lips, the eyes, and the eyebrow. And on the back, it's uh, a brooch pin, and uh, it's made to be a pendant as well. Now, this is probably DIY. I can't quite read it. It might, it might be indicative of someone making it in 1988. I can't quite tell. In any case, DIY or not, this is really quite unusual, and I think it could sell really cool piece it's been an interesting box so far here's the next piece this is a pearl necklace and it has these two really pretty beads that are larger than the other pearls and they have this very beautiful frame around the pearl there's a closer look at that I am checking the clasp to see if I see any kind of brand or marking, and I do not see that. This might be a vintage necklace. Next, I'm rubbing the pearls together to see if they feel gritty, and they do. So this is a real pearl necklace. I especially like these two oval pearls on each side of the necklace. It's a very attractive piece. Coming out next is this multi-pack of bracelets. This looks like a faux Pandora or Pandora style bracelet. And let's see, what does that say? That says love, so there's a love charm on it. Silver tone with blue details. Looks like blue rhinestones, clear rhinestones, and some enameled flowers. This pack of bracelets is probably ideal for someone who loves gift with purchase if they're a seller on Poshmark or eBay. And if you're not a reseller, maybe for a party favor or something if you're having a get together. I did just weigh this group of bracelets here and the total weight on all of them is one pound. So that's about 20% of the entire box. Not quite sure how I feel about that personally for me. I'm not that thrilled. And that just goes to show that these blue boxes, uh, along with all mystery boxes, it can be a hit and miss. 
Um, I've had fantastic blue boxes and I've had so-so. So jury's still out. Let's go on to the next piece. One of my least favorite things about these mystery boxes is when there is broken seed bead jewelry like this necklace. There are seed beads everywhere. I'm going to probably just toss this one because there are loose beads coming off of it and it's gonna take me a minute to clean everything up and let's just say goodbye to this necklace. I haven't talked about jewelry craft lots yet. I put together jewelry craft lots that I sell and they will be between five and 20 pounds. They include items like what you see here. Some are wearable items that I'm not interested in listing. And these are just a, a this is a stretch bracelet made of plastic blue beads. And some items are broken or worn. And I put them in craft lots and crafters buy them to repurpose the pieces. And all of this is going in a craft lot. Here's another group that's all going in the craft lot, bits and pieces, or pieces of chain for some reason that were included on this. It's just a part of a necklace, it's broken, missing pieces, a plastic beaded necklace. You can see here what we have all going in the craft lot. Here are a pair of earrings, they're quite lovely. They're black enamel painted and gold tone. Here is a closer look at the earrings. And you can see that they are clip-on and they have sort of a curve to them. Taking a look at the back of the earrings, we can see that they are marked St. John, which is a high-end clothing designer. Once in a while, I do come across some of their jewelry, so not a bad find. The earrings are definitely sellable. I will be listing them on eBay, so glad I found these in this box. Next coming out is this fun set of mini scallop shells. They're all strung together. There are, I like them because they're natural and so you can see the different colors in each one. Some people love wearing the strands like this just as they are as necklaces and there are others who love collecting these and they repurpose them into craft projects. The next item coming out is this bracelet. This is a super cute bracelet by Lucky Brand. You can see the jewelry tag on the end. It has a gold tone, antique gold tone peace sign, as well as individually linked turquoise beads or faux turquoise, let's see. I'm pretty sure that's faux turquoise. In any case, Lucky Brand is a great seller and I'm glad this was in the box. I will definitely be selling this one. Here's an interesting necklace. Now this is a macrame necklace, so you can pull it to make it tighter or pull it apart at the necklace part to make it longer. These are plastic. They are cowrie beads or plastic cowrie beads, so that would make them a faux bead. But the reason I think they're interesting is because they're covered with a rose gold tone covering. Now I am going to put this in the craft lot because some of them have little chips in them and some don't. So they could definitely be harvested off of this necklace and used in a craft project. Interesting. Coming out next is a silver tone pair of hoop earrings. These earrings are antique silver tone and they're puffy. I like the shape of them. They're like almost an elongated hoop and they have these cool little scallop texture design on them. Let's take the magnet to the earrings and see if the metal is attracted to the magnet or the magnet is attracted to the metal, whichever way you'd like to put it. And we do not have an attraction here. The interesting thing about these earrings is the ear wire looks like it has some sort of markation on there. I cannot figure out what that mark is. If you guys have any knowledge of that mark, leave me a comment down below. I'm trying to keep it still, but it's awfully hard when it's this close up to keep it perfectly still. I have a feeling these are sterling silver. Not only was the magnet not attracted to the metal, but they look and feel like sterling silver. So I'll give them a test after the video and I'll put on the screen right now whether I found them to be sterling silver or not. Really pretty earrings. I like them. Here's another pair of earrings. Awfully cute. I love the colors. A periwinkle blue and a kelly green. They're chandelier earrings and they have these clear crystals throughout the earring. I like them a lot and I think I might go ahead and list these. 
Here are a couple of charm bracelets I found. One is the gold tone charm bracelet and it's very sweet. It's got a postcard, the Eiffel Tower, a flower, a camera with a little crystal. How cute, and a little dog. Now the other one is a silver tone and has pink crystal beads, a shoe, a martini, a purse, and a flower, and a little dog on this one as well. This had a Claire's jewelry tag on it, and this one does not have any jewelry tag on it, but they're both very sweet. Here's a necklace that might be cute for fall with the leaves on it. It's a silver tone, antique silver tone, little dangles on the front that are leaves with crystals down the center of each one. Here is a better look at the leaf pendants that are hanging off of this box chain that's doubled over. There's a silver tone chunky chain going around the neck and of course it has a lobster clasp and I'm seeing a jewelry tag. The jewelry tag is Julie B, which I believe is a fashion brand of jewelry. This is a pretty cute necklace. I think it's perfect for fall, so I am going to put that in my cell pile. Let's take a look at a couple of the blingy items that were in this slot. Now this is a brooch. It is broken. It doesn't have the back attached to it, but it might be a nice thing to find in a craft lot if you're looking for extra rhinestones for replacement. This is an antiqued brooch, or antique I should say, an antique brooch. It is missing a couple of uh, rhinestones in it, putting that in the craft lot. And the balance here is also going in the craft lot. There's actually nothing wrong with this necklace or these earrings. There are a couple of crystals missing on those earrings and we will add them to the craft. The necklace coming out here is a black and white vintage necklace and I'm certain it's vintage. I'll show you the clasp in a minute. It definitely can use a cleaning but I think it would be pretty easy to clean all these beads up. As I mentioned, the beads definitely need to be clean, but here's a close-up look at the shapes and sizes of the beads on here. I think it's pretty interesting. Here's a look at the clasp and it is a hidden box clasp. That just means that the clasp, the C clasp hides inside this part right here, which is hard to get in through the camera. I can't get it. There we go. And also we see that there is a jewelry tag hanging and the tag says Pauline Raider. I have never come across Pauline Raider myself in any of my unboxings. This is my first one. What I can tell you is I know that it's vintage and it could bring good money. I think it depends on the jewelry piece. I will do more research on this piece and see what the value might be, but I'm definitely gonna put that in the sell pile. The next item coming out is this ring right here. It is a carved ring, kind of got a tribal look to it. Looking closer inside the ring, I believe that this is bone. I'm not sure what kind of bone. I've ha I don't come across jewelry like this very much, so I am not sure. If you know anything about this, let me know in the comment section. I will go ahead and size it right now. This is a size seven and three quarters. It's an interesting piece. It wasn't a huge quantity of earrings in this lot. So I have taken the ones that are here and paired them up. And these are the ones that did not have matches. I'm most sad about this one right here. This is adorable. This is a gold tone airplane earring with clear crystals on the wings. How cute is that? This abalone post earring is also cute. Too bad it didn't have a match. So this group is going in the craft lot. And this is the last of the earrings in this lot. There are five pair of earrings all matched up. I am going to start with this pair. This is a beautiful pair of hoop earrings. Let's get this focus back in here and they are open work. You can see there is a design all around. They are click top, so they, the top clicks in place. The earrings are marked 925. I'm certain that these are sterling silver earrings, but as always, I will give them a test, an acid test, and I'll put on the screen right here and let you know if I did find them to be 925. 
This pair of earrings here, these button earrings, look to be artisan made. They are porcelain painted earrings. They're kind of cool. It looks like they might even have some wire mixed in in the design. There is a post glue to the back, so those are kind of cool. This next pair of earrings are set in gold tone and they have a very pale pink center with some peach and pink dangles coming down and also some faux pearls. This is a cute pair of earrings. These are gunmetal tone, open work, and there are clear crystals embedded all throughout the earrings. Those are really cute. This final pair of earrings I find to be quite unique and pretty cool. I like them. They are a half of a hoop, I guess you could say. They're sort of a crescent style, crescent shape. And take a look at the way that they're made. See how they are kind of bent into each other and give a really neat 3D effect. I like these earrings a lot and uh, it's tempting to keep them, but I'll probably sell them. Here is a beautiful necklace with faux pearls. I think they're faux. I will check closer in a minute. Graduated sizes. So this center pearl is the largest and it graduates to smaller pearls all the way to the end. And there is a gold tone chain that's weaved all throughout in between all of the pearl beads. Very attractive piece. When we go in closer, we can see the jewelry stamp says KJL, that's Kenneth J. Lane. This is a great piece. I believe it's vintage. I will look further into it. This has an extender at the end. I just rubbed the pearls together and found that these are faux pearls. The pearls did not feel gritty when rubbed up against one another. This is a very sophisticated piece of jewelry. Kenneth J. Lane, I'm definitely going to be selling this one. Another group going in the craft lot. There's a mixed bag here. This is a necklace that is turning. At least most of the pieces are turning. This is a Claire's choker necklace. It's cute. Nothing wrong with it. Another necklace. There's nothing wrong with it, but they're plastic beads and shells. A little butterfly that looks like it's seen better days. This is a necklace that's nothing wrong with that it's labeled natasha and some really pretty plastic crystals on that a wooden and seed bead necklace a belt and a wooden stretch bracelet craft lot items and i forgot these these are non-matching watch bands and <laughs> they're going in the craft lot too if you recognize this little tag here then you know that this is a brighton piece this is a lovely Brighton necklace. This one's got a open cross with clear crystals all around and also one in the center. Here is a closer look at that pendant as well as the chain that it's on. And the ends look like this. It's got a lobster clasp with their signature heart on the clasp. This is really a lovely piece. The only thing I can say that might be an issue is towards the back, and it's not very noticeable, but I noticed that there's somewhat of a kink or not quite 100% uh, shaping right. I don't know how else to say it. Uh, so I probably won't list it because of that. However, if anyone who's watching is interested in purchasing it, drop me an email at kitsch.barbara at yahoo.com and we can definitely work something out on this beautiful necklace. And here we have a ring, the classic tragedy comedy masks known in theater. And it looks like it, there's something inside the ring. Let me just take a look. The ring is stamped 925. This is definitely genuine. I am going to give it a test. I'll put it on the screen right here uh, to confirm that it's sterling silver. But this is a cute ring. It's got a little, few little pits in it, but I think that's just from age. Let's see what size this ring is. This ring is about an eight and three quarters to almost a nine. Not bad. And there you have it, today's blue box from Goodwill. Everything in this bag is craft lot. Not sure what I'm gonna do with those bracelets yet. And all the other loose items in the box are items I'm gonna sell. I hope you enjoyed this video. Drop me a line down in the comment section and let me know 
if you have a favorite piece or two. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, hit my face in the right hand corner. That will take you to a subscribe option. If you enjoy jewelry unboxings like this, please take a look at the two videos on the left side of your screen right here. I think you will enjoy them. Thanks for coming in guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.